Hello and welcome to this video. We will continue talking about quantitative trading. How to identify a strategy that suits you. Whether a strategy is viable often does not have anything to do with the strategy itself, it has to do with you. Here are some considerations. Your working hours. Do you trade only part-time? If so, you wouldn't probably want to consider only strategies that hold overnight and not the intraday strategies. Otherwise, you may have to fully automate your strategies so that they can run on autopilot most of the time and alert you when problems occur. When I was working full-time for others and trading part-time for myself, I traded a simple strategy in my personal account that requires entering or adjusting limits order of a few exchange-traded funds once a day before the market opened. Then, when I first became independent, my level of automation was still relatively low, so I considered only strategies that required entering orders once before the market opened and once before the close. Later on, I added a program that can automatically scan real-time market data and transmit orders to my brokerage account through the trading day when certain conditions are met, so trading remains a part-time pursuit for me which is partly why I want to trade quantitatively in the first place. Your programming skills. Are you good at programming? If you know some programming languages such as Visual Basic or even Java, C Hash or C++, you can explore high frequency strategies and you can also trade a large number of securities. Otherwise, settle for strategies that trade only once a day or trade just a few stocks, futures or currencies. This constraint may overcome if you don't mind the expense of hiring a software contractor. Again, we'll talk about this later on. Your trading capital. Do you have a lot of capital for trading as well as expenditure on expenditure and operation? In general, I will not recommend quantitative trading for an account with less than $50,000 capital. Let's say that the bidding line between a high versus low capital account is $100,000. Capital availability affects many choices. The first is whether you should open a retail brokerage account or a proprietary trading account. For now, I will consider this constraint with strategies choices in mind. With a low capital account, we need to find strategies that can utilize the maximum leverage available. Of course, getting a higher leverage is beneficial only if you have a consistently profitable strategy. Trading futures, Currencies and options can offer you higher leverage than stocks. In today's position, allow a regulation T leverage of 4. Well, in today, overnight positions, allow only a leverage of 2. Requiring double the amount of capital for a portfolio of the same size. Finally, capital or leverage. Availability determines whether you should focus on directional trades, long or short only or dollar neutral trades, hedges or private trades. A dollar neutral portfolio, meaning the market value of the long positions equal the market value of the short position, or market neutral portfolio, meaning the beta of the portfolio with respect to the market index is close to zero, where beta measures the ratio between the expected return of the portfolio and the expected return of the market index require twice the capital of leverage of a long or short only portfolio. So even though a hedged position is less risky than an unhedged position, the returns generated are correspondingly smaller and may not meet your personal requirements. Capital availability also imposes a number of indirect constraints. It affects how much you can spend on various infrastructure, data and software. For example, if you have low trading capital, your online brokerage will not be likely to supply your with real-time market data for too many stocks, so you can't really have a strategy that requires real-time market data over a large universe of stocks. You can, of course, subscribe to a third-party market data vendor, but then the extra cost may not be justifiable if your trading capital is low. Similarly, clean historical stock with data with high frequency costs more than historical daily stock data, 
so a high frequency stock trading strategy may not be feasible with a small capital expenditure. For historical stock data, there is another quality that may even be more important than their frequencies. Whether the data are free of survivorship bias. I will define survivorship bias in the following section. Here, we just need to know that historical stock data without survivorship bias is much more expensive than those who have such a bias. Yet, if your data have survivorship bias, the backtest result can be unreliable. The same consideration applies to news whether you can afford a high coverage, real-time news search such as Bloomberg determines whether a new driving strategy is a viable one. Same for fundamental, example, company financial data, whether you can afford a good historical database with fundamental data on companies determine whether you can build a strategy that relies on such data. The next table lists how capital, whether for trading or expenditure, constraint can influence your many choices. This table is, of course, not a set of hard and fast rules, just some issues to consider. For example, if you have low capital but open it an account at a properly trading firm, then you will be free of many of the considerations above. So, not expenditure on infrastructure. I started my life as an independent quantitative trader with $100,000 at a retail brokerage account. I chose interdict brokers and I traded only directional intraday stock strategies at first. But when I developed a strategy that sometimes requires much more leverage in order to be profitable, I signed up as a member of a proprietary trading firm as well. Yes, you can have both or more accounts simultaneously. In fact, there are good reasons to do so if only for sake of comparing their execution speed and access to liquidity. Despite my frequent admonitions here and elsewhere to beware of historical data with survivorship bias, when I first started, I downloaded only the split and dividend-adjusted Yahoo Finance data using the download program from hquotes.com. This database is not survivor bias free but more than two years later, I am still using it for most of my backtesting. In fact, a trader I know who each day trades more than 10 times my account size, typically uses such BSS data for his backtesting, and yet his strategies are still profitable. How can this be possible? Probably because these are intraday strategies. It seems that the only people I know who are willing and able to afford to rapid cheap BS free data are those who work in money management firms trading tens of millions of dollars or more. That includes my former self. So, you see, as long as you are aware of the limitations of your tools and data, you can cut many corners and still succeed. Through futures afford you high leverage, some futures contracts have such a large size it will still be impossible for a small account to trade. For instance, so the platinum future contract on the New York Mercantile Exchange has a margin requirement of only 8,100. Its nominal value is currently about $100,000. Furthermore, its volatility is such that a 6% daily move is not too rare, which translates to a 6,000 daily profit and loss swing in your account due to just this one contract. In contrast, ES, the e mining S&P 500 future on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange has a nominal value of about $67,500 and a 6% of larger daily moves, happening only twice in the last 15 years. That's why its margin requirement is $5,500, only 55% that of the platinum contract. Your goal. Most people who choose to become traders want to earn steadily, monthly, or at least quarterly income. But you may be independently wealthy, and long-term capital gain is all that matters to you. The strategy is to pursue for short-term income versus long-term capital gains are distinguished mainly by their holding period. Obviously, if you hold a stock for an average of one year, 
You won't be generating much monthly income unless you started trading a while ago and have launched a new sub portfolio every month, which you proceed to hold for a year, that is, your stagger your portfolios. More subtly, even if your strategy holds a stock only for a month, on average, your month-to-month -month profit fluctuation is likely to be fairly large unless you hold hundreds of different stocks in your portfolio, which can be a result of structuring your portfolios. And therefore, you cannot count on generating income on a monthly basis. Thanks for watching. We hope you learn with our content. We will continue in next videos.